Hey guys, this is MacMZ1, and today I'm going to be making one of many videos on a very old programming language called Fortran. Fortran is a language that's been around for over 25 years, and it's gotten uh, upgraded and changed around since it came out. So the first Fortran, I believe, was Fortran 4. The second one, I believe, was Fortran 77, which came out in 1977. And the next one after that was Fortran 90, which came out in 90. And there might also be a 95. I'm not positive about that. There's also something called G Fortran, which is a Fortran for Linux and Unix systems, which is GNU Fortran. And this it has the syntax of Fortran 90, but also works with Fortran 70, of course. And um, it's, it's interesting. Um, so the reason I'm doing a video on Fortran, which is kind of an obsolete language, is because I, I was using this the other day just because I was bored, so I was learning it. And I realized, hey, if it was 20 years ago, programming would still be fun. So I want to just show you guys a couple things you can do in Fortran in this tutorial to make it a really nice language. Um, now, I might not necessarily be showing you the really nice language stuff in this specific tutorial because... There's a bunch of ugly stuff you have to get past first. So I'm going to be using t Terminal to, of course, be programming in Fortran. If you find an IDE, which I doubt you will, you can use that as well. And if you want to install Fortran, um, which you should if you want to be able to follow this tutorial and do it, you have to download G Fortran, which I'll have a link for in the description of this video. Um, so I'm going to get started and create a hello world application. So I'm going to edit my hello.f file. And so here's how every Fortran program starts out. Every line of code that's a normal um, line of code has six bases before it. And the first line has to be program, then the program name, I'll call it hello. Then the last two lines have to be stop and end program. And you don't have to write the program name. Now, you can't hit tab here, you have to type six spaces, which gets annoying. And I'll explain that, why that is in a second after I make our Hello World application. Uh, there we go. So, right here, this will write with these parameters, Hello World. And I'll explain the parameters. So, first parameter means the place we're writing this text to. If we just put star, it means the terminal window. The second parameter, which is the second star, is the format that we are printing it out in. If we say star there, it'll be a default format, which has a space before what we print out, and automatically a new line. So it's actually a pretty nice format, but if you're getting input, it gets kind of annoying. And so, um, in a later tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use formats to get rid of this, this little annoyance. So, why do you have to put six spaces before each line of code and I actually realized that the hard way um, by not doing that and I figured out that what the six spaces are actually for and this is actually pretty uh, bizarre but once you get used to it it's a good idea are for different things so if the first character is a C that means it's a comment the lines a comment it doesn't count as the code the second to second uh, to fifth character so four digits right here are the line label normally this is a number specifically I like to use multiples of ten so a thousand and that can be whatever you want then the the the, the character before where you normally write code to so the fifth space in um, is the continuation of the last line so if a line gets too long you can continue it on the next line and start out the continuation on the character before the character that you normally start out as to tell the compiler that you're continuing the line. And the reason you'd want to do that is because lines also have a limit to the length, and that also gets quite annoying. So, um, I'm just pointing that out. Um, you can also declare variables just like in a normal programming language. So, if you've done math, a variable is um, a number. But in programming, it can be a bunch of different types of data. And they can have names longer than one character. So we can say integer, colon, colon, i. And that makes us have an integer called i. 
In math, you can just use variables all over the place and then maybe you have to solve for them or something. Well, in programming, you have to tell the programming language you want them. And if you're already a programmer, you know all this. So, yeah. So I've declared an integer called i. You do the type colon colon and the variable names. And now, say I want them to enter in a value for i. What I would do is I'd read with the same parameters as the right thing. It's the same thing. You'd say i. And that reads one integer. And then you can say, and I'm going to make this square the number. Your number squared is i. And I could put a space here, but since it's formatted, it, I, it, it puts a bunch of random spaces there anyway, because integers can be longer, so it's too lazy to get rid of those extra spaces, I could say. Um, so if I finally run this and compile it, I'll use G Fortran to compile and run, um, it'll work. So it'll print out hello world, I'll enter a number, I'll enter 10. It says your number squared is 10, but that's not the number squared. So, the way in math you normally square numbers, use the little subscript 2. While in programming, you can either use star star, I'm not sure if you can do that in Fortran, or you can just multiply it by itself, so t i times i is i squared, essentially. So, here now, if we run this, um, hello world, 10, your number squared is 100. So, it clearly worked there, um... So, that is our first Fortran tutorial. I taught you the integer variable, um, and I've taught you write and read statements at their simplest form. So, thanks for watching MacHeads101. Subscribe, and goodbye.